Ever since the end of World War II, when the United States took over as the world's policeman, there has arisen a notion that the United Kingdom has taken a back seat in international politics, and that it was the United States that was responsible for most of the war crimes and atrocities of the late 20th century. After the Second World War, the British government was in massive debt to the United States and had a rapidly failing economy. And what is the easiest and quickest way to pull your country together and inject money into your failing economy? That's right. War. Though the UK's role in the Cold War is known for its disastrous decolonization process, it's very dangerous to forget the crimes that the British committed post-World War II in the name of profit, and it is even more dangerous to ignore the crimes they are committing right now, in 2018. Now, I can rant for many hours for the horrible things that the British did during the Cold War, in order to preserve their economic hegemony in Southeast Asia, such as their failed police action against the Vietnamese Revolution or the war crimes parade that was the Malayan Emergency. But that is not what this video is about. Maybe I'll discuss these in a different video, but today I want to discuss a part of the foreign policy that is being pursued by the current British government under Theresa May. Now, in the time that she has been in power, she has shown to be a willing lapdog to American interests, as well as doing everything she can to help make Britain a cartoonishly evil ethnostate. But today I will be actually talking about Theresa May's husband, Philip May. Many newspapers have been less than discreet about the impact of the Prime Minister's spouse on current policy, since he serves as an unofficial advisor to the PM, which makes sense since they are married. However, many of these newspapers failed to actually elaborate how Philip May has actually impacted British foreign policy in the past few months, and why. That's why I'm here. Philip May is the relationship manager of Capital Group, a massive multinational investment organization that is a large shareholder in many corporations and controls assets worth $1.4 trillion. It owns 6% of Amazon making Capital Group their biggest shareholder. Other shareholdings include at least $7 billion in JP Morgan Chase, $9 billion in Philip Morris International, $5 billion in McDonald's, and $1.5 billion in Ryanair. Perhaps most importantly to this video, Capital Group owns 7% of Lockheed Martin as well as 9.7% of BAE Systems, Lockheed Martin being the largest weapons manufacturer in the world, that is responsible for the vast majority of missile systems used by the United States and the United Kingdom, and BAE Systems is the largest military contract in the United Kingdom, mainly focused on aircraft. Lockheed Martin and BAE Systems are truly monstrous corporations of war profiteers, but this video, sadly, is not about the disgusting nature of the military-industrial complex, but rather its involvement in British foreign policy. Now, some of you may remember that in April of this year, following allegations of chemical attacks in Syria, which deserve a video of their own, the United Kingdom and the United States launched several missiles at certain targets in Syria. The United States launched 19 brand new smart missiles known as JASM, produced exclusively by Lockheed Martin, each of which cost approximately $1 million to produce with a total cost of just under $20 million, and the United Kingdom launched 8 Storm Shadow missiles, produced by BAE Systems, each of which cost around $1.13 million, totaling at around $9 million US dollars. Donald Trump even bragged about the Jassen missile on Twitter. You may wonder what these missiles have to do with the military-industrial complex, or the United Kingdom, or Philip May. Well, let me tell you. As a result of these missile strikes, the share prices of Lockheed Martin and BAE systems soared, and the US and British government started buying more, and Capital Group made a fortune from their shares of the two defense contractors, numbering in the billions of dollars. It is also believed that Philip May earned over a million dollars in personal profit. And perhaps the most damning fact about this whole situation is that Theresa May approved the strikes without as much as consulting Parliament. She was acting upon the advice of her husband, who was acting in the interests 
of Capital Group, and by extension, that of Lockheed Martin and BAE Systems. But that's not all, folks. There's a more recent example that I hope is still fresh in your memory. Just over a month ago, on the 9th of August, the Saudi military committed a war crime when they bombed a school bus full of Yemeni children with a 226 kilogram guided bomb, which killed 40 children and 11 adults, injuring 79 others, 56 of whom were also just kids. Not long after the strike was reported by local media, activists began sharing pictures of bomb fragments which were found at the site. These included the front control fin of a GBU-12 Paveway 2, which is a guided bomb produced by our friends at Lockheed Martin. The bomb was also likely dropped from the Panavia Tornado, manufactured by Panavia Aircraft GmbH, who are part-owned by BAE Systems. It is also likely, or rather possible, that it was dropped from a Eurofighter Typhoon, which is manufactured by Eurofighter Jagdflugzeug GmbH, a company part-owned by BAE Systems. Lockheed Martin earned a tidy profit when their bomb was sold to the Saudi military, and BAE Systems also benefited greatly from the sale of their expensive aircraft. But perhaps the group that profited most from the massacre was Capital Group, who profited greatly from the increase in share prices of Lockheed Martin and BAE Systems. And the interests of Capital Group are the interests of Philip May. And since he's direct and private advisor to the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, it becomes pretty clear why the United Kingdom launched those missiles in Syria, and why the United Kingdom actively supports the Saudi government and their efforts in Yemen. And in case this wasn't enough for you folks, in June of this year, British Eurofighter Typhoon, again built by BAE Systems, dropped the same 226 kilogram guided bomb made by the good folks at Lockheed Martin, in an unspecified location in northern Syria. Britain's Ministry of Defense refused to identify the target and said the strike was a wholly proportional response, which doesn't sound suspicious at all. It is important to realize that the United States is not the only nation that engages in illegal and immoral warfare for the sake of pleasing shareholders. For too long have people been passive about the crimes Britain has been committing all this time, and it is our duty to pay attention to what the next British military action will be, and to analyze the motivation behind the leader's actions, which are more often not about ideology, but about pleasing their corporate owners. It's nothing new or revolutionary for someone to say that the British government engages in war for profit of military corporations. However, I mean, I acknowledge that it has been said like a million times before by numerous people throughout time, from Karl Marx to Lenin to Castro to even Gaddafi. But it's important to understand that the system of exploitation and war profiteering did not go away or disappear after the Second World War or even after the Cold War, but rather that it has never stopped and that it is actively going on. And it costs countless lives its main motivation and what continues to do is to line the pockets of individuals like Philip May. And this example applies to every capitalist nation, not only the UK. So if you're ever wondering what dictates foreign policy of a capitalist nation, it's the same thing that companies like Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, BAE Systems, Capital Group, and also Philip May care about, and that is profit. 